Good morning, Corey. How are you, bud? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Before we get started, I did want to... Uh, I, the, this uh, podcast is going to come out next week, but this week is Nurses Week. My beautiful Shout out fiance. to our nurses. Yes, she's a nurse. Happy Nurses Week to all you beautiful boys and lady boys out there. We appreciate everything you do. Yes, we do. And also, before before we get started... We got hmm. some some life updates. I want to know how your weekend went. You went and visited your your shit. new home. You're gonna get yeah. married soon. A lot of shit's going on over in Corey's world. Yeah, May's insane. Um, my wife and I are buying a house uh, across the country without ever having stepped foot in it prior to this weekend. Um, so we were able to go out last weekend and go take check it out for the first time. Uh, took a red eye. Our flight got delayed. Ended up not sleeping Friday night, going to the house Saturday afternoon. It was it was an insane weekend, but um, everything worked out. You know, luckily we have some family out there that were able to help out with the process and go make sure everything looked okay. Um, tried some of the food. It was Cinco de Mayo. Drank some tequila while I was out there, which was fantastic. Uh, should have taken some Z-Biotic with me. That's what I should have done. You should have. What's should've. the what's the food scene like over in Georgia? Yeah. So, I mean, it seems like there's a little bit of everything. Obviously you have that, you know, the Southern comfort food, there's a waffle house, like, you know, in, in Utah County, how you can't go more than a block without seeing a Mormon church. Right. That's how waffle house is. Yes. I was hoping, I was hoping that whenever I asked you about the food scene that you didn't go immediately mentioning waffle house, but you know, here we are. You know, it's, it's a Southern staple. I got to learn. It is. It is. Well, um, then, unfortunately, you have Waffle House I, and Waffle Hut. I don't know if you saw both ooh, of them together. No. There's deep, deep, deep rivalry there. And uh, depending on what city you're in, you know, one you, you may find roaches in and the other one you don't. So you kind of just, you know, they choose. But we don't know which one's which. Yeah. It just yeah, depends on what okay. city you're in. The big problem with the food scene is that where I live, I'm going to be 15 minutes from a Taco Bell. I knew that's where we were going. I knew it. That's a long way for you, man. That's, That's a, a long, long way. way. That's a, yeah. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to learn how to be comfortable with that drive five times a week. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to take up the miles. So uh, I did have, I do have an interesting story from, cause I did go into uh, my new job and I had to go and do all the standard, you know, turn in my vaccinations, blood draws, background checks, um, fitness exam, just pretty standard stuff. Stool sample. Um, yeah, exactly. Right into her hands too. Yeah. No gloves. They're weird up there. That's strange um, people in the South. <laughs> so I walk in, uh, the, the nurse that was helping me was very kind. She was a nice woman, but first thing she said was how attached are you to that beard? Oh, I know. I was like, uh, very, I think my wife would leave me if I, if I got rid of it. Um, she goes, this, oh, this well, is like, you know, this is like the nurse, this is the nurse, uh, like a, a director at the hospital or something who does the so like, for... like the employee health okay. visit nurse okay. that's right. helping me with all of my documentation and stuff. So, um, you know, I tell her I'm very attached to it. Why do you ask? And, uh, she went on, I mean, this is the hospital I'm going to work at. It's the real deal. So I'm going, I'm going to be working on the neuro floor. So strokes, TBIs, spinal cord injuries, you know, you name it. You're saying the, the real deal in comparison to what you do now. Yes. In comparison. <laughs> so my, it's like a fake physical therapy job. What I have out here sometimes is what it feels like. Yeah. And then I was also Social traveling worker. before that. And they don't, they don't give a shit about your travelers. You know, you just, mm -hmm. you go in the first day and they load you up with a caseload. Like you don't know, even know where, you know, your computer is or your login. And they're like, okay, go see these 10 patients. And we're three weeks behind on documentation. But this place is legit, man. They're like, yeah, you know, if we're treating tuberculosis or COVID positive patients, you need to wear your N95 and we have to comply with the laws of, you know, making sure that it's sealed to your face. So you can't be wearing a, having a beard and wearing a mask mm. because you break the protocols, which I've never had anywhere I've worked ever uphold that, you know, people sure. don't really give a shit about that sort of stuff. So I had to go through a, I can't remember what it was called. And I wish I could, I think it was like a CAPS. CAPS or something like that. It was basically like a, like the evolution of the tinfoil cap for like dudes yep. who get abducted by aliens. You put it over your head and then there's like a film that stretches down and around your neck and it like 
circulates air, purified air into the device. And you have like a hookup, like you're a vocalist of a band or something like that on the back and you have to flip it on. So she said, if you're not, if you're not going to shave the beard, then if you treat a TB positive patient or a COVID positive patient, you got to wear the hat. So I had to watch this like 19, can you tell me what's the, video on how what's to the name it. of the hat? I want to look it up. That's what I, I think it was like caps or something. Cause I'm thinking of like something. So whenever you started talking about that here, let's do, what do you think? Like caps, um, um, purified helmet, medical helmet or something. I don't know. Purified helmet. It's let's see. <laughs> That's not it. Oh man. That looks like a, looks like a horse helmet. This, that's not it. That's hilarious. It just showed me like a, like a, what are those called? A jockey, a jockey hat with a chin strap is what it, what popped Dude, up. Dude, it looks like, it looks like that, except no, it's but there's way no, bigger. Yeah, I mean, there's no like, film I look like anything. a, I look like a xenomorph when I wear it. Like the head comes like all the way at, you know, out in front of me and yeah. I'm going to be really top heavy and just falling constantly. Interesting. It'll be nice. Well, we'll have to, I'll have to or, look that up and we'll have, to, we'll have to find it, maybe put it in the show notes or something. Cause I've never... I've never seen one of those, but it reminded me, and sorry, if you had anything else in the story, you can no, get to good. it after I'm done. Uh, the, with COVID, so I was, you know, the COVID PT for, for where I work and we, I don't know if you had to do this before, but we had to do these specific N95 mask tests where just to be able to basically say that they've fitted you for the right size, whether you're a medium or a large or a small or whatever, you have to put the mask on and then they put this giant beehive helmet on you basically, but it's not suction cup to your neck. Like the one you were saying, cause that's kind of what I was imagining it looked like, but they put this giant beehive helmet over you and then they spray this nasty, bitter tasting, uh, noxious fumes into the helmet. And if the mask is working as it should, then you shouldn't taste it. Is what is what they say. So you have <laughs> what to a barbaric but, test. Yeah, but if it, but if you do taste the bitterness, which it's it's nasty, that means that there's a, a leak in the mask. So that's kind of what I thought they were going to do to you is just like test to see if your beard made it, you know, worse. And it sounds like they they're just saying, nope, you got to wear this giant helmet instead. Yeah, and uh, rest assured, I was on the very large end putting on that helmet. She's like, you got a big head. <laughs> They got, yeah, yeah they have, they give you like a, a helmet locker. Like, what do you do with that thing? You have to take it home with you every day. You, so you have to rent it basically for the day. What? So you have to go down to wherever and like they have a couple and you like sign off and you take it for the day and then you just return it. I mean, I feel like at the end of the day, they're just going to be like, Hey, just Corey's not the TB guy. He's not the guy. And that's, like, let's that's get, kind let's of where just, I hope it goes. Right. Or they're, unless they're just like, you know what? You got your helmet for the day. You're going to be seeing every TV. And <laughs> we want to see Corey in the helmet. Yeah. <laughs> dude, you're going to be sweating your eye sockets out, dude. That's going to be crazy in there. Yeah, it's rough. And even with, you know, with the little film that you put over, it like completely, like my beard is completely locked up against my face. So. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's no bueno, but we do what we got to do to provide for the family, you know? That's right. I'm excited for you, man. I know that, uh, the last few years has been very busy for you and I'm just, as, as a friend, just excited for you to, to be able to spend more time with me, be able to spend more time with your wife, I guess, and be able to <laughs> you, not you work your ass off. Yeah. I mean, you do use the term friend loosely, you know, we are more more peers. I tried more to work. I tried to say, say it. In, I tried friends. to say it in passing, but you know, you had to bring it back up. Yeah. But dude, I mean, just don't, don't, don't go telling people we're friends. Okay. I, I Especially not in public when we're being recorded. I don't like that. Yeah. I know what you're saying. Well, life update. Well, on. Also, Hey, yeah. Go before ahead. you go, I want to hear your updates. Cause we got life updates for you too. Yeah. I got wild a on couple, your end. a couple life updates. So one, I had a, a bachelor trip over the weekend, which was honestly a blast. It wasn't anything crazy like you would imagine a, a bachelor party would would be. It was mostly just like outdoor activities, and uh, we did a really long, beautiful hike by the Buffalo River, which is which is near where I live. And then we did uh, a long ten mile float. There was nine of us guys out there. It was a lot of fun. Um, just reminded me how much I love to get away and enjoy the enjoy putting my phone up and I didn't even, it was basically dead the entire time and I just never used it. And it was just a, it was a good time. It was a good time to unplug maybe some of the worst, absolute worst 
restaurant service I've ever had in my entire life. Um, Interesting. Both days that we ate out, which was hilarious because it was just like one thing after the next. Like we we were at some podunk cafe and uh, we waited two hours for our food where they, they clearly just forgot about us and just kept serving everybody else. Like the entire restaurant basically flipped over and we were still sitting there like after a 10 mile float, just falling asleep, delirious at the table because we were so hungry. Where were you? It was just in some some small, it's called Jasper, Arkansas. It's just some small town okay. in Arkansas. It's like, you know, they have two restaurants, but it had really great ratings. And we were starving after our float. And we're like, let's go get some food. And we just literally sat and waited and waited and waited. We got our appetizers in like 10 minutes. And then we waited two hours for our food. And they were like, and, and clear, like very clearly forgot about us and just didn't want to say it. And the very end, she was like, yeah, you know, I tell everybody this time of year, you're going to be waiting a while. And we were like, okay, that means it was her fault for sure. Not she a valid excuse. Yeah. No, no, no. But yeah. So, and then literally the next day we went out to, to brunch and, uh, at some other, you know, local, boy brunch, local let's town. go. Hey, I'm a big fan of the boy brunches, but yeah, we went out and, uh, same thing. We waited, you know, almost 45 minutes in an empty breakfast place for uh for our food and, it, and they messed it up and it was crazy and everybody like our two people at the at the table they got iced coffees <laughs> the waitress she walks up with two glasses and uh like two glasses with the iced coffee and she just goes i tried my best and sat them down and we were like huh and she mean? and she walked away and the, the boys took a sip and they were like this is awful I can't drink oh, this. No. Yeah. But like who <laughs> Dude, out in Jasper, Arkansas, they drink black coffee only. Oh no, no. It was yeah, exactly. So whenever they were like iced coffee, she was like, Eee, I don't really know how to do that. But that yeah. You never come to your table and go, I tried my best and to smile and yeah, walk that, away. Yeah, that's an odd one. Not a good sign. But the other life update, which will be fun to see how uh next week's podcast goes, is I am getting a nose job. It's happening. Congratulations. That thing is Finally atrocious. Happening. I know. It's hard to look at. It's hard for me to look at. Um, actually, funny story on the on the, the look of my nose. So I go in, and you and I have talked about before, I think even on the podcast, that we both our noses are both jacked up and uh, it's, I have a hard time breathing. And so I go in. I was supposed to get the surgery done two years ago, but insurance, they called and they canceled on me the day before because my insurance declined, which is a lot of fun. And so finally I get to have my, my appointment with the doctor. So I go in last Thursday, he does the whole examination and he goes, or, you know, he says, okay, yeah, I still agree. We should do the surgery. Surgery scheduler comes in and she's like, yeah, I don't have anything until like middle of August. She said, but we do have, we do have something just opened up next Friday. And I was like, huh? She's like, yeah, next Friday. I was like, okay, well, let me make some phone calls. That's, that's a, and she was like, yeah, it's like a three hour surgery. You're going to be out, you know, you're going to have two week recovery. You're going to have stitches and a and nose, uh, a nose splint in for seven to 10 days. So there'd be a pretty major surgery. She's like, yeah, it's we next can, Friday. Uh, we can get you under in about uh, 10 minutes here. If you want to just uh, yeah, if get come back. But yeah, so, and I have a wedding on Saturday, a bunch of, it's going to be, it's going to be a very busy, strange weekend. We're probably going to have two black eyes and a massive splint in my nose, but, but yeah, we're talking about uh, how ugly my nose was. It was just, it was just funny because they're doing a septoplasty for people that don't know. It's my septum in the middle of my nose is deviated. So it's like an S curve to where making like breathing is just difficult. I think the same thing's wrong with you, right, Corey? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And my other thing is that my nostril, I have these small shitty nostrils that just collapse. So for those that can see the camera, awful Disgusting. no nose function just collapses can't breathe and so what they're going to do is they're going to put these things called litera implants which is basically like they're like little stary strips almost of of this plastic that just slowly disintegrates over time in your nostril that kind of holds it open and it's funny they they use that because sometimes they don't want to use your own cartilage because they don't want to fuck up your nose because if they do your own cartilage, it will actually widen your nose. And so the, the, the doctor, I, I'm sure you feel the same way, but a lot of specialists, like not just your primary care doctor or like the, the, just your, you know, regular, like the DOs or just the, the general doctors that you run into the specialists, like the plastic surgeons, the orthopedic surgeons, a lot of times they're pretty weird people. Have you, have you fi figured that out? 
Yeah, a little socially awkward, and I feel yeah. like that stems from being just so much more intelligent than everyone yeah, else. Yeah, I know? think you're right. They just they're on a different wavelength, you know. And I feel yeah. like I've just had so many instances where I've been around like the specialist, the specialist, the ones that are in school until they're like forty, and they're just different. And this guy, mm-hmm. three times explaining to me about the Litera implants versus using my own cartilage and just goes, yeah, I don't want to mess with your nose. And he would just smile and go, you have a nice nose and just stare at me for a second and then go, you have a nice nose. And I'm like, thanks. Can we move on? I'm did, sold in the Litera implants. Did he like touch it? You know, he caress it? Yeah. He just kind of really like, nice. he just like rubbed his fingers along the outside. Just I like, want to see it from the inside. <laughs> That's <laughs> a nice Take nose. another look. Yeah. It was just, very creepy and it was like i got it after the first time but he said it three times and just would like smile and stare at me and i'm like uh-huh okay you don't have to well, sell i will me on say this. i did have a patient who had so home health down here don't know why he's down here i mean he's retired i guess but um so i was treating a patient and the house is amazing you know which does not happen to me ever So, you know, I'm just kind of chatting them up. My uh, patient was the wife. She had had a back surgery and the husband was a retired neurosurgeon, you know, so you kind of get intimidated talking to those individuals, you know, and, and uh, yes, like you said, very socially awkward and was like purposefully trying to stump me during my visit, you know, uh, with like things that I shouldn't know anyways, you know, first it was, he was talking to me about the surgeries and, and I don't know if he got annoyed that like I knew about it and that I wasn't like coming to him like, Oh, Mr. Neurosurgeon, tell me all about this, you know, <laughs> because like I understood the surgery she had. I understood what they did. I understood the hardware she had. I understood her precautions, blah, 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 blah. Right. And yeah. then he starts like going off on like neurological diseases. Well, have you ever heard of this? You know, Oh, it's, you know, there's only been five cases and, and I treated, I treated one of them, you know, and like, just like weird, super weird guys. So every Ugh. single time I go, I'd have to, you know, take a deep breath at the door. Like this motherfucker is going to like, you should have just, just like faked, completely like, faked vomit me. every time. Whenever he's like, yeah, I don't know if you've heard of this. I, you know, I was one of the only <laughs> few doctors that treated it the five, the five cases usually go, <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. God, sorry. Just vomit every time yeah. he brings up some annoying shit. Yeah, yeah it, was, people just it like was brutal. That, it's weird. I've never, I don't know. I don't have a, a bit of that in my body. So I just, I, I just can't relate or like sympathize with people like that. I mean, I feel like I'm very opposite yeah. of that, you know, like I, I don't present myself in a way that's typically very professional. And so when I tell people, you know, what I, the exa- only example I have is I was uh, at a clinic here the other day and they were asking me, you know, what's your highest level of education? So I told them doctorate and the lady went, hmm. And that was it. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. Hmm. Did you bring your degree with you, sir? Hmm. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I don't really know what that means, but I mean, when I tell people what I do, I feel like they're like, Oh yeah, that doesn't fit. Yeah. Like where's your, you're a physical therapist. Where's your six pack? You know, it's like that stipulation. Oh, what, what professional sport team do you work with? Right. Like I I couldn't even fucking name all the NBA teams probably. You know, I just don't care about that stuff, but, but I do want to know with your nose job, are you going to request, you know, a little bridge reduction, get that nice Cindy Lou who look. Ooh, you know, like maybe, like that little that little swoop at the end, like a like a yeah. sleigh. That Move would be out pretty, to Whoville. That would be nice. I feel like I, I, I could, I could live in Whoville. It'd be nice. I love Christmas. It could be good. I, I yeah, I might. I'll just request like last minute, just see if they can just do something wacky. Like just surprise me when I wake up. That's what I want. I want to be surprised with maybe a. <laughs> You're not even look like yourself. <laughs> yeah, I want to look like a different man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't think they're. I don't, uh, apparently these, these implants aren't going to change the shape of my nose. I have a pretty narrow nose anyway, so I don't, I'm not really super worried about it, but we'll see. Maybe I'll just get like a massive blowout whenever I wake up. I've been seeing this thing on the internet that like you're either one of four types of handsome. It's like your dog handsome, your bird handsome, your rat handsome, or your, what? So there was one other animal and I don't know. And they had pictures what of it and it was weird. Mean? I know. That, well, that's kind of what I thought. And then they showed pictures and I was like, I guess I kind of see it, you know? Wait, say, I don't know. say I would, the animals I would again? Give you, um, I, the dog, ones I remember, rat, it was bird. dog, rat, bird. And they had like, so for the rat, they had um, 
what's his name? Uh, Timothy Chalamet, the one that's in Dune. Uh-huh. They had him, and there was like the dog one was. Uh, I'm gonna fuck it up. I don't know. They had to hit Henry Cavill for one of them. But what I will say is, you give you give me bird handsome vibes. Bird. I, I I would probably say that because of my 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 thin beak of a nose. I, I mean, mine's that. massive, just not as thin as yours. Yeah, you got a big so nose. I, I, got, I, I can got a say small, that because mine's humongous. Our, we both have shitty noses in different ways, and I guess in, mm-hmm. in opposite ends of the spectrum, right? I guess maybe. I mean, I, all I know which side is yours uh, collapsed in on? Mine collapses on the left, but mine like deviates away from the left and then fucking swoops back in to catch a little bit on the right, just to just to try to get a little bit of both sides. Yeah, when I went and got my uh, and I like went and got an endoscopy, and she was kind of like looking in my nose, and she couldn't even get the camera down my right side. She's like, I would, I would consider that ninety five percent occluded. Yeah, like, my, oh, that's good. And I, I know you never good. know if the if they're just telling you this because they want to do the surgery. But my guy just kept saying like, Oh yeah, this is this is this is weird. Like yours yours deviates a lot. It's pretty severe, and it cuts back in, which is abnormal. And I'm like, Okay, well, if you're you know, I'm, I'm sold. I need to get, I want to get this done because I want to be able to breathe again. So if you say it's that bad and you do, you know, a hundred of these a, a month, I'm, I'm game. I want to go to your guy, you know, I want him to compliment my nose. Everyone He'll usually just you, says dude. it's big. I think I it's because he's, I just want someone to say it's pretty. I think it's because he's, well, I think it's because he's pretty now. The first time I saw him two years ago, he had, he had braces and we all know how we feel about adults with braces. And, uh, it just, it put me off a little and now he doesn't have braces. He's got nice, pretty white, clean teeth. And, and I think he just, he, he, he likes to be able to throw in a couple uncomfortable smiles every visit if he can. Yeah. He had a, he had a divorce and he had his, you know, glow up. That's right. Oh, he's That's ready. Right. Well, he had a divorce and she took the braces. So he, he only got like 60, <laughs> well, 60% of the way in. And she, she ripped the braces off. Dang. Too bad. He can't afford another one. That's Shoot. That's right. That's right. Uh, I was kind of sharing a little bit of uh, some of my patient experiences, you know, with uh, with my little neurosurgeon friend. Thank mm-hmm. God I don't have to see them anymore. I would love to hear what you got on the docket for your patient story. It actually kind of rolls with that in terms of like I I think about this nearly every day because you know it's a lot I'm, to think about something. It's a lot, but it's just I don't spend a ton of time on it. But it's just something that's inevitable. I can't get around, you know. I've been doing home health for, I mean, it's four, almost five years now. And I, the one thing that's just continuing to, continuing to, like I said, think about it every day is just how drastically different the culture is from, you know, us in our twenties and thirties compared to the people that we see in their eighties and nineties. And it's just funny because it's just so different, even though we're in the same country, grew up in the same area. It's just, everything is so different. Like for example, one that I'll always remember that made me laugh and you have to laugh, right? A lot of these things are fucked up, but you have to laugh. The, I had a patient that I was with who was born in the twenties, right? Which is insane. When you think about it. this, this person was in their seventies when I was born, Right. And we were walking into the kitchen and this person has a wife and they have a caregiver who helps them out in the house. They're pretty well off. And we go in and the dishes are done and we're doing, I like to do my exercises at the kitchen sink because people can hold on to it. Right. So we go in, we start walking in, the dishes are done and he walks in and he goes, Oh, look at that. Pointing at the dishes. And he goes, yep, they live to serve us. And then just started working out. And I was like, about huh. the caregiver? There's about about women. He was talking about like about women. He's like, Yep, they live to, <laughs> they live to serve us. And I was like, Okay. <laughs> and just moved wow. on. Didn't laugh, didn't do anything, just started to do his exercise. And I was like, All right, well, that I didn't expect that at all. And then you have the people who are just so racist. I mean, just like, oh, yeah. Insane. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, they'll say some shit, and you're like, oh, you just, that wasn't ironic or it wasn't, uh, <laughs> you just passed right that right that right on by and just kept on going. Yeah, and you're like, sir. Yeah, it's, it sir. is crazy. You said the quiet part out loud, sir. 
Right. <laughs> Can't be doing that. Can't be doing that. But yeah, it's just like, I, and I see, that's where I'm saying like the difference, I just notice it more and more. And I just, it, it happens every day, right? Where somebody will say something that you can't relate to at all, or you can because of the experiences that you have, but it's not anything personal. It's just from experiences that you've had of other people around that age group. But it's just culturally how crazy it is where it's, it's every day somebody says something and like the, the racist stuff is even, is even crazier because of, you know, the age that we're in now where, you know, it's, it's been kind of embedded in our minds that like, you know, not to be racist, but also just to be like, Hey, everybody, except everybody, we're all the same, like color doesn't matter. You know, women are on the same level as men, black people on the same, same level as white people. Like everybody's on the same level. And I just don't even think about it. And then these people are over here just like spouting racial slurs or saying how things used to be better here whenever it was more white and like just crazy shit. Like, you know, you're like, Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Okay. People still think that way, but you don't realize that like, and it's not me like giving them a pass. It's just saying that things were so different, you know, in 19, 1929, you know, like I can't relate to that at all. And it's just, it's just wild to me that like we all get in our little social bubbles and we all sort of think that that's just how the world is working or how like the way we're going. And then you realize, Oh, there's still some crazy people out there who are holding on to their, beliefs from the thirties and forties who just don't change, you know? Right. Yeah. A couple thoughts on that. Um, one as shitty as it is for like a man to think, or at least to me, it's shitty for a man to think, Oh, they, they live to serve us. You know, I don't know what I would have said. I probably wouldn't have said anything, but I, I think that's pretty shitty behavior, but as shitty as that is, women were the same way in that day. So like I work in the inpatient facility I work at, that's partially long-term care. There's a lot of women there. And we have, um, we have a woman Coda, a uh, occupational therapist assistant, a certified occupational therapist assistant. I never knew why it was Coda instead of just an OTA, but sounds um, it does sound better. Um, I hear patients asking her all the time, Oh, are you married? You know, the, the eighties and the 90 year olds, mm-hmm. um, or oh, are you married? Oh, well you, you need to get married immediately. You know, right. it's like, you know, they, they have those little questionnaires where they go and interview and they're like, Oh, when were you born? What's your favorite food? What's your, you know, what do you look back on fondly? It's like, some of them are like serving my husband, you know, right. like being yeah. a stay at home wife for my, for my 12 kids. And like, they were just like vessels to have kids and clean up the house, which is so crazy to me to believe. Yeah. It's just things that um, things were just so, they were just so different. And it's like, mm-hmm. you can't, I mean, I don't blame the individual for that. I wish that there was some more. And I think that this is still true to this day. I don't think that there's enough people who are open to, open to change or open to controversial statements from the other side. And, and mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, other side isn't not even necessarily political, but just, you know, beliefs opposite of your own and being like, hold on a second. Why do I hate black people? Like, why? Hold on a second. Does that make sense? And then like thinking about it instead of just being like, Oh yeah, that's how we, that's how I was raised. And that's just how I am. You know, I, I think that again, it's one of those, am I going to change this guy's mind who's 94 who just says that they live to serve us probably not and you know what well I, what, what can i do but like I, I just think it's interesting just to think about that in terms of like being this these individuals were probably like that their entire life and weren't open to change whenever things came around and just makes me think even more about trying to be very pliable with <clears throat> with everything and you know politically socially you know, everything, just trying to understand both sides and, and or yeah. just all takes, right? And there's so many things generationally that they, that are held on to that's, you can't generalize that, right? Because not everybody's like that. You have those yeah. cool ass grandparents that are like out getting tattoos and like, you know, do, doing cool stuff that wasn't okay back then. But yeah. I mean, you know, you have it about gender, you have the generational, you know, biases about age, religion, race, and you know, here at Healthy Birds, we accept everyone. It doesn't matter if you're yellow, purple, black, green. We just we'll we want. You all the same we actually we want the purple ones. Yeah, we yes. would rather have Bring all us the, the purple people. Yep. Yeah, we we won't hate you because of the color of your skin. We'll hate you just because you're a terrible people. 
terrible person. That's right. And that's, that's fair. Right. We just judge you off your well, character, not your appearance. <laughs> I will say, so I can kind of go into this a little bit, expanding on your patient story. Uh, you were talking about, you know, in the 20s being born. Um, I had a patient the other week who was a World War II nurse. Damn. I thought that was pretty insane. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So and she, I don't know what the so that would have been. Were I mean, if she was, because that was what the... I'm so bad with history. What was World War II, like 43? For, I think 44 was the number that came to my head, but I, okay, I also so have we're a weird in the same. like 41 to 44. We're in the boat, though. Uh! What was it? I don't know. Let's look. Oh, you had, I, that was a little chant like you were right. I didn't know. No, that was me being, uh, I'm bad with history. Oh, I'm so bad with history. Never been good. Never enjoyed it. I wish I was, I wish I could enjoy reading a good historical biography or something and i, I want to give it a chance but i'm just i'm never interested in that when was it hit us with the dates uh world war one ends in 1918 that wasn't the question that wasn't the question oh god we got all a bunch of shit back to 1938 before it all okay. started japan attacks pearl harbor on december 7th 1941 Okay, Which, so I think so. Forty-one. Well, that's when the U.S. Like. started, at least. So for us, it started in forty-one. For us, no matter Americans. what has happened over in Britain. So if so, in nineteen forty-one, you would imagine that to be a to be a nurse, this person had to be, you know, probably over eighteen. So just like like you said, like being that's insane to have to have that experience, basically going through what you know, not much younger than we are now, mm. and then interacting with us. 70 years later, almost 80 years later is crazy. Right. I guess she's one of the cool ones too. Yeah, you know, and, she's and like yeah. loves exercise and loves learning technology. And like, she just got her first smartphone because she like only had a landline and the family. Now that she had this sickness, they like want to keep in closer contact with her. So she got a smartphone. She's like so excited about it. And she's complimenting my tattoos, telling me, you know, she likes the art and stuff. So, I mean, they are out there, but there are, I mean, the inherent racism and you know the i don't know the but dude shout out than thou yeah and you know they may be racist but shout out to them for being the sole reason that landlines still exist cuz my god yeah they're they're keeping some company in business they are holding that front afloat cuz they so many landlines i see every day and my favorite is whenever it'll start ringing and and i'll be like you need to get that and they're like nah it's just spam and I'm like, why do you? Yeah, you don't use it anyway. Like, why do you have it? And they were just like, wow, we just you know, just in case somebody needs to get a hold of me. And I'm like, you got a cell phone in your pocket. It just doesn't make any sense. But you're also a racist, so that doesn't make any sense either, does it? Landline does not get the Healthy Bird stamp of approval. No, and that's no, a damn no, fact. No, 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 never, never has. I still remember my uh, my childhood landline though, nine two five two five seven four. And that's a fact. Everyone, call it now. See what you can get. Yeah, who who knows? See who, who, who pick picks up now. But that was, yeah. You, you remember that though? Like in the, in the day, whenever you're about to go, you probably weren't a bus kid. You were probably a, a bomb drop off kid, but whenever you like had to get on the bus and, uh, you know, they were, your mom was like, okay, what's our address? What's our phone number? Cause you didn't just have a phone in your pocket. You know, you had to know what your address and your phone number was just in case you got abducted or if you got, you know, started walking into the woods and got lost, found a cave or something. Yeah, I got my uh, I got my first cell phone when I was like six, uh, sorry, fifteen, right before I turned sixteen. So like once I was starting to drive, was they it a got chocolate? me one of those. It wasn't. I wanted a chocolate so yeah, bad, man. We all did. I wanted a razor and I wanted a chocolate, but instead I got like one of those slide phones, you know, that like slid up and then exposed the keyboard. Yep, yep. They had was, one of those. That was pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff back what then. What were those called? Know? Those um. I'm going to blank. I want to say it started with an S, but yeah, either way, that was, those are the oh, days. Oh, are you talking about the sidekicks? Yeah. Well, no, that the was the one where you flipped, side kicks yeah, where you flipped sideways. I had the one that you're talking about though. I just can't remember what Blackberry. it was called. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, but it's crazy. Kids these days are getting cell phones at like oh, fucking yeah. seven. Yeah. Which I, you know. All these it, iPad kids. It's crazy. I don't even know. I mean, obviously I've got kids, so I've got to think about that shit, but I've got some time. I don't, I don't think, I, I think that it's to me, it, it seems pretty obvious that you you need a cell phone probably earlier than we did as a kid, just because of how interactive everything is, even with school, you know, like I, it happened pretty soon after we left high school, you know, now when you go to high school, they just, you get your own computer. 
they just hand you a laptop and that's where you do a lot of your homework or you do a lot of classwork and things on your computer. And so, and that's just happening earlier and earlier in our education. So I just wonder how soon or who even know, who even knows what the phones are going to be like whenever my kids can get a phone, yeah. you know, like think about what phones were like 10 years ago. And, and who knows they're if they're so even going to have the intellect to be able to manage a phone That's right. being raised by you. That's right. They may not even be able to hold a phone. They'll be <laughs> Remove their I do hands. want to ask, so don't put don't put too much thought into it, okay? I just want you to burst out your first number. What age is appropriate to get a cell phone nowadays? Three, two, one, go. Twelve. Okay, I think that's not bad. I, saw, I still feel I feel like for me it would be you know when my if my kids are out you know at friends' houses or you know yeah. things like that. They, I need to know when to pick them up, where they're going to be. You I know, think things yeah, like that. exactly. I think the biggest the biggest argument for me would be like whenever they're old enough to be able to for you to drop them off somewhere and be mm-hmm. responsible. Where it's like, hey, they're twelve. You're sibling is doing a practice over here and you've got a practice over there and we can't be at them at the same time or whatever, or right. the other stuff we have going on. It's like, Hey, you go to practice, you take your phone with you. When you're done, call me, I'll pick you up. Like stuff like that, you know, which is just yeah. fucking weird to even think about because my kids are two, but I know it'll yeah. happen at some point. But yeah, I and think that's I the really age, go, right? Yeah. I don't really want to go too crazy into this. I know it kind of strays away from the purpose of the podcast talking about some of this stuff, but it's our fucking podcast. That's right. So listen anyway. We're so halfway we're healthy. Forward. As long as we got some health stuff halfway through, we're good. <laughs> so, but I will say, I mean, there's also always the option to do, you know, get them a phone that just has phone call capabilities. Yeah, you can, capabilities, you can do you know, a lot of that control. censoring stuff and like, you know, make sure that it's, that it only goes to certain, to certain yeah. things, right? I'm only going to let I them think, watch uh, like World War II documentaries and stuff and just block out all the other. Now documents. you know the dates, dude. You're a, you're a historian. That's right. That's uh, right. I, I, yeah, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if I want my eight or nine year old looking at like beheading videos. Yeah, like, like it's I too was, easy, you know, it's too <laughs> it's easy just, to get. Yeah, it's too easy to get to. Um, yeah. okay. A big 180, which we wouldn't, wouldn't be the halfway healthy show if we didn't do 180s the entire Kick time. Flip. Kick flip 180 board slide into a nolly pop shove it. So Knocky. on this topic about tech, there was a recent, I don't, did you, have you seen the recent video that's been going around about humane? It's a new AI wearable. You seen this? No. Okay. So it's pretty incredible. So humane like just H U M A N E. Exactly. Yeah. And I think the website is like H U dot M A dot N E, which I hate, but it is what it is. Um, <clears throat> so it's pretty insane. So it's a new AI device, which it will, I'll get to the health side of it here. Bear with me, people quit judging us on the other end. Okay. So this new device by humane, it's, it's mostly like, it was like a, it was a Ted talk, but it was kind of a teaser, but it was pretty incredible. So, Basically what it is, picture like a little, it almost looks like the size of like an AirPods case that rests in your pocket sleeve of your shirt. And it has a camera on the top and a speaker. It's a little AI device and it can do a ton of stuff. So it basically sits there and it listens to the conversations you have. It's, it's, you know, they say that it's security first, but it listens to the conversations you have. It sees what you see. And so it's able to interact with things in the environment. You're able to ask it questions. Like in the demo, it said, it it showed like a, this is where it gets into a health a little bit. It showed uh, the guy had a piece of chocolate in his pocket and he picked it up and he put it in front of the camera and he said, he held the button and said, Hey, can I eat this? And it said, it has cocoa butter in it, which you are intolerant to. And then he was like, Hmm. okay. And and then he just said it again. He's like, I'm going to eat anyways. And then the AI was like, enjoy it. And like, it was just like able to like interact back and forth a little bit, but it had his information and it was able to say, you probably shouldn't eat this because you are intolerant to cocoa butter. And then other stuff, like he could take phone calls on it. So like he held his, it start, so it started ringing and he held his hand up and it showed on his hand because it has a little projector. It showed in his hand that his wife was calling and he could accept it or decline it. And then, um, he asked it like, Hey, my wife's birthday's next week. Where can I get her a good gift? And it said, you know, it didn't give him like a huge list like Google might. It actually consolidated it down into a short answer. And it said, Hey, you might check out the shopping center. And that was it. So it was kind of showing that, Hey, it's not just a search database where it just spits out. Here's 40 different places you can go. It's using, it's like tailored to things that you've looked at online, things that you've shopped for things in your environment. And it's just saying, Hey, go check this place out, which I think is awesome because it's, 
I, that's like the one thing that's annoying to me is if you search, you know, get online and you, you're like, fuck, I got a white elephant next week. I want like a funny white elephant gifts. And it's like, here's the 40 different websites you can click on with the top 10, top 20 white elephant gifts or whatever. Right. And you're like, okay, now I've asked my question. Now I've got to go do 30 minutes of research to find. Whereas this thing, if it knows what you're searching on YouTube, what you're shopping for on Amazon, it sort of knows your habits. It can start suggesting things for you. And so that was pretty cool. And I'm trying to think if there was, there was one more thing to, oh, this one was even, even crazier. I forgot about this piece. Two, two other things that they, that they demonstrated. One was he literally just said like, catch me up. And it summarized his recent emails, text messages, and calendar events. So like it, it would say, Corey, Corey says, hurry the hell up. And your recent, uh, recent emails from uh, your work says that you have a meeting tomorrow at this time, whatever. Like it just gives you a summarization. It doesn't just sit there and read hmm. off all of your emails and all of your messages. And then the, one of the coolest things for me, at least, cause I'm just thinking about this in terms of like patient interactions is he, he held the device with two fingers and said a language, like said French. And then he, he stated something like he, he read, he just said two sentences and then he let go. And then the AI, the thing in his pocket used his generated clone voice. So it was his voice in fluent French and said the sentence, said the two sentences, which I thought was pretty awesome. Cause like we have a, a pretty, a pretty large Spanish speaking population and I'm sure you've used the devices, but they're ass trying to like tra yeah, translate like Google translate. And yeah. All and those, Google yeah. translates fine, but like, it's just not great. And then if you do the phone call back and forth, there's a lag. Sometimes they can't hear you. It's just like, it's just annoying. So that was pretty sweet to me, but just in general, a pretty insane device that they've, it was just basically the only thing released so far is this Ted talk. Um, but I can imagine, a, a, you know, a ton of things that could be useful. Even if we just looked at it on the health side, uh, being able to tell you your intolerances, be like, Hey, you may not eat that. Or, you know, what if you can say, Hey, I'm on a, what if it gets good at scanning and being able to predict, you know, calories or something, right. It'd be like, Hey, mm -hmm. I'm on a, I want to be on a low calorie diet and lose X amount of weight by X time period, you know, Hey, and it can scan and say, Hey, you know, you only have 800 calories left. Be careful with that chalupa. You know, yeah, you might want to slow down, you know, like it can, maybe it can kind of guide you back and forth or say, Hey, you haven't drank enough water. I just, I can see all these different use cases in right. the health field, you know? Well, I will, I will say first and foremost with the interaction piece where you can just talk with it, I am getting really scared of the time where my AI gets smart enough to do that because I, I already have my, Oh, my don't get Alexa scared of the time. The time is apartment. now. Oh, no. Well, my Alexa, she just, uh, she doesn't yell back at me. You know, and it's uh, true. I think I think this is a personal. I'm a, I'm aware of this. I do think that this is a red flag um, for me personally. Uh, if Alexa doesn't understand what I want, or she doesn't give me the answer that I'm looking for, or she doesn't play the right song that I ask her to play, I'm I, I'm not very happy with her. And oh I yeah, will insult her. And oh, yeah. uh, you know, as of right now, it just boo like turns off when you insult her or something like that. But as soon as the things like. I know where you fucking live. I'm sending a letter bomb to your house. <laughs> I'm automating the process. Yeah. I'm on onion browser right now. I'm sending, you know, fire ants, you know, and putting them in your car or something like that. That's Ooh. a, that's a scary time. Yeah. So I need to be nicer to my AIs. This, this yeah. poor Alexa, I should probably just throw her away. She knows too much. Right. Um, well, I think get a new the, one and start over. Yeah. I've, I've just been, I'm sure I'm not alone in this. Obviously I, know I probably get more AI fed videos and articles in my, algorithms, but I think it's becoming more commonplace. Like I can't remember what the stat was, but a, a huge percentage of the population has at least tried chat GPT, you know? And so mm -hmm. I, I wonder, you know, these devices, are they going to be, you know, three grand a piece? Are they going to be ex like accessible? This person who's building this used to work for Apple and was on the design team for the, the Apple watch. And so I imagine they're going to try to keep it like in that price range. I don't know, but what I'm getting at is I'm just, I'm interested to see how many people are going to actually be scared and how many people are going to be like, holy shit, I have to have this to sort of like level up in life. You know, like if I don't have this, I'm missing out, which is like what you want as a company, right? You want people to feel like that. You want it to be like a, an iPhone movement where, you know, 
ninety percent of people you know have an iPhone, and it's because they don't want to be the one that doesn't have an iPhone, you know. And so I wonder if we're going to see a little bit of that in situations like this. I think it. This kind of reminds me a little bit of like what Google Glasses was were supposed to be, and who knows if this is going to flop, kind of like they did. Um, but yeah, I just think it's it's interesting to see if it can be. Like, if it will continue to learn, you know, and really be like your own little personal AI companion who just learns and learns and learns more about you to where you can ask these very generic questions or like, Hey, you know, my watch history for the, from the last 10 years, you know what I laugh at. What's a good, what, you know, suggest something for me to walk to, to listen to or watch. And they're like, Oh, this person just came out with a stand up special yesterday on YouTube. Go check it out. I'm like, fuck yeah, let's go. Like, that sounds like a, a great use case, but a lot of people are probably going to be scared, but I wonder like how long that's going to last before they're just like, oh yeah, yeah. I got to, I got to have one of these. Of course, your first thought goes to YouTube. You're a freaking YouTube kid, man. YouTube kid, man. You're yeah. you're just going to buy your AI just to suggest you funny YouTube videos. I mean, I got You got to love YouTube, man. It's like just it's a it's the wild west of the internet. Anything and everything is on there. That's true. That is true. Um, Healthy Birds season one, gut health. We're uh, three weeks down. We're entering into our fourth week. Uh, given daily gut health tips, um, trying to trying to educate the masses on the, the in a digestible fashion what they should be doing for for their gut health. Um, something I wanted to go through today, which I did not allow you to prepare for, is uh, before, I wanted to before yeah, we do ahead. that. Sorry, I just want to oh, just cut me off, man. You got this weird complex with that. I just have to. It's not really. And it's a, starting it's, to piss me off. I know, man. It's not just know that it's not a complex. I just do it with everybody. It's because. If I don't say something right now, in four seconds, I'll forget that I ever had the thought and it'll just be gone. Um, but just a quick shout out, get on YouTube, go to Healthy Birds. We released our first YouTube video around gut health, about the four tips to immediately improve your gut health. Go check it out. That's it. Shameless plug. Go on. Healthybirds.org. Subscribe to the newsletter. We have links to all of our socials. Go give it a look. Okay. It'll be a good okay. time. Yeah. Please, um, please go. So... Seven worst diet fads in history. Nothing, you know, not all of these are current, um, but I would love to go through these with you and just have a chat and just talk about what people used to do and think was was healthy and just how terrible society is. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Feed me. Feed okay. me, Papa. That was good. I liked that. I feel like they kind of do get a little bit like worse as they go down the list, even though number seven is a little bit of a letdown. I feel like five and six are worse than seven, but... Um, number one, have you ever heard of the clay diet? No, but I think I can imagine what it is. Uh, the idea is that bentonite clay, which is a super absorbic volcanic ash, will remove toxins and heavy metals from your body. Upon digestion, the clay swells up 12 times its size and pushes out slow moving waste in the gut, boosting oh your metabolism. God. Yes. Um, the, you know, there was this researcher, this gastroenterologist, uh, Dr. Anton Emmanuel at the University College of Hospital in London says, uh, you know, it can be good and bad, which I was shocked by immediately. I just thought, okay, that's probably a bad thing. That's what play. I thought as, as you were saying that actually in my head, as you were describing it, I was like, I've, I could see how that could be a benefit though. Cause I've heard of other, other situations where people will eat, like say they'll, they'll eat dirt and there are certain things in yeah, dirt that to, act like as like digestion. A, yeah. And it, it acts as like a, a binder and as a, it like, you know, uh, neutralizes certain things in your body. So well, I, yeah, and we have the, there's animals in our animal kingdom, um, that eat like rocks and stuff to help digest food. Right. Oh, I don't dude, know which ones they would be. I just remembered that one of the craziest things, sorry, this is going to be such a tangent, but I'll, I'll, I'll make it quick. You just remind me of like things that, that animals eat. So at our Airbnb out in the middle of nowhere by the river over the weekend, there was this nice little dog that showed up and we're like, Oh, you know, cute dog. It was a girl. We named her Daryl. We can, you know, we want to go into that. So the next day we, you know, we're, we're having this, we're hanging out with this dog, dog sweet. She goes home, whatever. She comes back the next morning, petting her. Somebody walks out of the front door and they're like, Holy shit. There's a pig here. And we're like, what, what? And we, we walk out, there's this giant pot belly pig. I'd be like 300 pounds, just slamming his nose into the front of the gate. And he's just ends up being an absolute nuisance. It's like chasing us around, trying to bite my heels and bite the, bite the van. 
And we ended up just kind of ignoring him. And if we ignored him, he would be a little asshole and try to try to bite us. But then eventually, I think he realized that we weren't going to give him any more food. And he just starts eating rocks, just like straight up is just chewing on rocks and just chomping through them, which made me think of, you know, what you what you were saying, where there's some animals that just eat anything and everything. There you go. The the animals that eat rocks for digestion. That yeah. that uh, pig sounds like it may not have passed the rad's uh, autism test no, potentially, man. but this, we'll man. say that it had a method to the madness. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, sorry. Speaking of on. eating weird things, uh, it's that time of year. Bugs are getting in the house. Tilly uh, killed our cat. Our black cat is named Tilly. Uh, she killed and ate her first moth, and I was so proud of her. Wow, last her, night. a true killer. Yeah, true killer. And we were just cheering her on. Kill, kill. But she really <laughs> just wanted to torture and play with it. And yeah, then once, once it are, died, she just ate it. Yeah, cats are, are actual, you know, crazy, are crazy creatures. What's number two? Well, anyway, getting back getting back on this, though, I did, I did want to say the clay diet. I am not going to recommend anybody doing this. But they do say that the clay acts as a resin, you know, and it binds to everything. Mm-hmm. Though. So like the good stuff and the bad stuff. Sure. Um, and it makes it harder to digest those nutrients. So... Um, super interesting, but also eating clay can perforate your bowels, so don't do it. Yikes. Is is my thought. Do you have any other thoughts on that? Nope. Number two. The air diet. Mm, now I've heard of this one and I am a fan. You, you practice this one because yes. you have a, such a slender body. That's right. Um so the air diet, French inspired fucking French people, man. Hey, they love um, they love their air, man. You, if anybody loves air, you it's take a French. You take a forkful of real, actual, edible food. You oh. put it to your mouth, but you do not eat it. Mm-hmm. You simply breathe in its aroma and imagine swishing it around in your mouth and then just swallow the saliva that you have. And then you put the food down. I just, did that. I just did that in my head, and I think that I think it doesn't work. Stuffed. I don't think that works. <laughs> yeah, so apparently on the air diet, you're allowed to like drink soup. AKA own the only soup you can eat is water mixed with salt, but they call it a soup. Hmm. Um, but the, the theory is that your brain isn't very smart and you can trick it into <laughs> thinking it has nutrients by getting the aroma and doing the action hmm. thoughts. I mean, it sounds like bullshit. D- does uh, the air diet and does the clay diet get the healthy bird stamp of approval? No, no. It does yeah. remind me though. I hope I'm not spoiling one of your other ones, but it reminds me. Uh, I saw. A Why couple, would you even do this? A Why years, would you do this? A couple years ago, I saw a video of people who uh, who said that they didn't need to eat because they got all their nutrients from the sun. And that was just mm, photosynthesis. That's right. They were photosynthetic photosynthetic th- photosynthetic humans. I'll get there. Mm. You found it. I yeah, found you it. you made it there. That's not on here, and you're lucky. Otherwise, <laughs> I would have ended this podcast immediately. Fair. Um, This one, I feel like a lot of people have had. This is probably the most popular one on the list. The tapeworm diet. Oh, yeah. You get them Mexican tapeworms at the black market, baby. Yeah. You can get a tapeworm. You can get a pill that contains a a tapeworm egg. What's that cost? This is interesting. I don't know. Good question. I'm going to find it out while you're talking about it. Sounds good. Uh, Something that was crazy. It it can live 25 years longer than your pet's. And nope. it can grow up to 55 feet long. Luckily, God. you've got a lot of room in them tubes in you, in them butt tubes. That's wild. Um, so basically, the, the theory behind the tapeworm is it eats whatever you eat, right? So it ingests part of the calories that you would be digesting. Um, again, theory is sound, not good in practice, you know. Pain, diarrhea, nausea, fever, allergic reactions, infection, disrupt, uh, disruption of critical organs, blockage of bile and pancreatic ducts, and my personal favorite, I practiced saying this, but I think I'm still going to get it wrong, neurocytisorosis, neurocy, neuro, neurocysterosis. Sounds like Shit. you didn't practice. I didn't practice it recently. Mm. Neurocysterosis, which can lead to dementia good. and vision loss. Damn. Well, shocker, the internet doesn't want you to buy tapeworm pills. So everything is just about dewormer. But uh, yeah, there was a lot of headlines that were like, can't lose weight, try the tapeworm diet, which I love. Crazy. I want to be the one that, that, Crazy. Wrote, that wrote that. But yeah, that is that is literally insane that people would even just would even go for that. Go to your uh, go to your local witch doctor, 
Get some. Uh, oh, I know get one. Some dewormer immediately if you've eaten a tapeworm and quit being such a fool. Start yeah. listening to the podcast more if you're doing this. That's right. Interesting. So, hey guy, give me give me two more because I got a I got I got a little uh, gut health thingy too to end with. All right, well we'll go quick. I'm getting through this whole list. Fuck you. Okay, let's the do cookie it. diet. Now that. Wow. Not not real cookies. We're talking cookies that are basically just protein and fiber. And uh, you can only max out at 1,100 calories a day, but you can have one additional meal. But other than that, the only thing you can eat are these high-protein, high-fiber cookies. What's in them? It. Do they say what's in them? Was it just like protein powder I think, and, I think and, there's and fiber powder? I think there's different kinds. These are high-protein, high-fiber cookies infused with nutrients. Is that really sounds says. like they don't taste good. No, I guarantee you it doesn't. We recommend you eat a healthy, wholesome, real food packed with fresh fruits, vegetables, and grains. Don't be silly. And cookies. The the Fletcherizing Diet. Never heard of it. Dr. Horace Fletcher, um, he came up with a, uh, a diet back in the Victorian era, which this guy was actually kind of ahead of his time, but this diet was, was foolish. His thing was kind of like slowing down the rate that you eat to allow yourself to get hungry. And he advocated for like making sure you know what you're putting in your body. But he also said that no matter what you put in your mouth, food or liquid, you must chew 100 times to Hi-ya. properly mix it with saliva. Um, and that you, each meal should take over an hour. And really the idea behind it was you're not going to eat that many meals if it's going to take you an hour to do it. No, but your jaw is going to look incredible. Seriously. Oh my. The direct quote from Fletcher, don't swallow it unless the food swallows itself. Damn. That, that's must, how, be what, that's that's how, that must be what Henry Cavill does. He must chew God, hundreds of times. Man. Ask yes. my wife, dude, my celebrity car crush, Henry Cavill. Really? I mean, he's a good looking dude. And he's, and he's, a, he's kind of a, a, a little bit of a closet nerd as well. He's a good, just a, a guy I'd like to have a beer with, you know? Yeah, I don't think really closet nerd. He comes out with yeah, all of his, true. you know, he built his own PC on stream and he does all the Warhammer 40K. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, I said, I said a guy I'd like to have a beer with. What I meant is a guy I'd like to chew a beer with. Yes, 100 times. Hundred times. Yep. Yes. That's a kind of man I'd like to wake up next to. And I'll just leave it at that. The Sleeping Beauty Diet. Hmm. Sleep is great. It replenishes you, helps your memory, boosts your mood. Soak in that slumber. But the theory behind this Sleeping Beauty Diet is go to your doctor and get prescription medications and just sleep more during the day. Because if you're sleeping, you're not eating. So this this uh, plan recommends sleeping up to 20 hours a day God. to limit your calorie intake. Wow. Elvis Presley supposedly tried this diet once and put himself into a coma because of it. Interesting. Interesting. He yeah. did a lot of stuff, I feel like, that led to that coma. But right. We love our sleep here. Seven, eight hours. Let's stick with that golden Let's rule. Hold that right. There's got to be better ways. Um, last one, number seven. Made it through. The cotton ball diet. Oh, you ever heard no. of this one? No. <laughs> so the theory is fill your stomach with things that don't have any bad nutrients in it. Like, and if and if like you don't cotton. like the flavor, yeah. If you don't like the flavor, dip the cotton ball in juice or a smoothie before swallowing it. You could just drink the smoothie. Drink the smoothie. That could it's sound. a way to fill you up without taking in calories. The Gosh. only thing that they didn't realize is that cotton balls are not actually made out of cotton, but bleached polyester. Nice. That is toxic. That is toxic. Toxic. It's that also is. toxic behavior to walk around. That is with. toxic behavior. Yeah, to walk around with a bag of cotton balls and you eat that, you're like, yeah, I'm gonna diet. Sorry, yeah, I, I mean, can't. it just reminds me of Elf. I saw it from Elf. Will Ferrell did it. That's or you just, or it. you just show up to your to your boy brunch and somebody has a glass of orange juice and you're just like, hey, I'm just, I'm on the cotton ball diet, but they're getting a little old. Do you mind if I dip in your juice? You just, mm-hmm. you just lean over and just give a little little dip skis in their orange juice and just give a little flavor to that ball. Silly. I think the moral of the story is a lot is a lot of information is constantly coming out. You know, we know more about diet and gut health now than we ever have. So just look at, I mean, these things were being done, some of them within the last 10 years. And I'm sure some people are still practicing these things. So just do your research, be prepared. If Healthy Birds doesn't say you can do it, then don't do it. Healthy Birds stamp of approval. What I was going to say say is what I take away from all that too, what I hope other people do is just be, be skeptical. Like your first, your first gut reaction to anything you see online should be, I don't know. Let me go, let me go look that up or go see if that has any, 
any actual research to back it or any, even if it's just anecdotal data, like let's see if there's other, other people that have had the same experience before you just go start, you know, eating cotton balls or, or taking six laxatives a day, right? Like try to, mm-hmm. try to actually do some, do some research and just start off being a little skeptical and then go figure it out yourself. And if any of those did sound good to you, you know, as we were talking about them, you're like, oh, actually, that's not that bad. I'd like to try that. Uh, stop playing so much Minecraft and start reading. Right. Because your brain is turning to mush. Get your get your reading level above third grade, and then let's let's start talking about some other serious things about your health. Exactly. What did you want to chat about? There, were, you said there was so, something you wanted to talk about. Yeah, we can. Long episode today. It is long episode. But that's okay. We'll close. <laughs> we'll close out with this. This is like my. Uh, we'll just blend it into whatever I'm I'm doing for the week because I'm I'm looking into this a little bit more, but. Basically, I talk about this on the video too, but just the trying to understand what antibiotics do to our bodies. And I think it's just a, another healthy birds PSA of just saying, Hey, take, take a little bit more time in understanding what antibiotics do to your gut and what antibiotics do in the name. They destroy bacteria and they don't just single out the bad bacteria. They also hurt the good bacteria. So whenever you take an antibiotic in a, in a pill form, we'll say you are destroying the gut microbes in your body. And of course there is a time and a place to do that. Whenever your body is being absolutely overran by bad bacteria, you have an infection, you need those antibiotics, but just understand that it can also, and will also destroy the good bacteria. So what can you do? I sort of think about this in two different ways. One is try to avoid them. So a lot of times your physicians are going to just default to that. If you have something going on, they're like, Oh yeah, just take this antibiotic. They don't, some are more giving than others and they hand them out like candy. Other ones don't as much, but all I'm saying is just question, be like, Hey, is there something else I can do first to see if I, if I can, if I can get rid of this without taking antibiotics. And a lot of times they'll say, Oh yeah, try this first. And then you can do that. If it doesn't work, go on antibiotics. The other side of this is if you do have to take antibiotics, then try to take a probiotic at the same time and take it up to two months after, because what's going to happen is, you know, most antibiotics are like a week to 10 days. You're going to destroy the good and the bad bacteria. Well, then you have to replenish those bacteria back because you're almost like creating a clean slate. So reintroducing good bacteria can help, you know, People who have been on antibiotics know that it can cause diarrhea, can cause fatigue, and a lot of those things are due to it fucking up your gut microbiome. So yeah, those are really just the two things. Like try to ask your doctor if there's any other alternatives before you just jump on it. Same thing for your kids because they, they suggest those a lot for kids as well. And again, sometimes you just have to do it. And if you do, introduce some probiotics so that you can build up that gut microbiome back again after taking antibiotics. That's it. And is, is probiotic something that you recommend somebody take as like a daily supplement or you just say, you know, all you really need is if you're, you have lower gut bacteria, take it for a couple months afterwards, you know, after yeah. antibiotic or something like that. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the key right there is like, I don't think there's, there's probably a very, very small percentage of population that needs to take a probiotic supplement every day. But what it seems is, is like, especially I would recommend nearly everybody take one if they have to be on antibiotics, because no matter how good your gut microbiome is, you're destroying it when you take antibiotics. And so, but the idea is that you get these probiotics in your system via a supplement or via just food, uh, probiotic foods. And so you're introducing the gut bacteria in your gut, and then you're feeding that gut bacteria with your fruits and vegetables and your other nutrition. And so those bacteria should thrive with the food you're giving them. You shouldn't have to continue to introduce them every single day for the rest of your life. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So that's, so not, that's not really that the key. I didn't know. I was asking for the viewers mm. now. And honestly, a lot of this stuff, it's, it's been a great experience going through these, you know, starting healthy birds and, you know, doing these seasons because Dalton would probably agree with me. I'm not going to speak for you, but we've learned so much about gut health yeah. in the past two months as we've been preparing for this, you know, learning about all this stuff. So yeah, um, it's crazy. We're learning with just, you. Yeah. We're, and that's, that's like the key of like what we talk, we've talked about this before is like, I just, I want this to be a situation where like everybody is learning with us and we'll do the, uh, the annoying research and be the, the voice boxes that spout it out, but everybody can learn with us. And still, even though we've been researching this and studying it and looking into it and putting it out on videos and content for a month, we're just literally touching the surface, which 
we know we're halfway healthy. We're not trying to put you guys through a, a 30 day ultimate crash course of gut health where you're going to be gut health scientists at the end, but at least we understand it a little bit better. And so can you, and, and maybe you can make these little, these little changes throughout your life to make your, yourself a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit more suited to be a decent human being. We will do the research for you. And all you have to do is in exchange is stream our podcast and give us a few pity laughs once a week. And go give us, I feel like that's go a give good us exchange. five stars. Give us five stars. <laughs> it helps us out a lot. We need it. Absolutely. Closing thoughts, Dalton. I, I, I love you, man. And I love, I love doing this with you. I love everybody here listening, staring at our faces, maybe give it, getting a chuckle along the way. If we're not funny, just tell us because we, we can do better. I'm sure. Just let us know. But I, I appreciate you. Appreciate everybody being here and just excited to keep this thing rolling. I love you, babe. Love Next you time you see me on this podcast, I'll be a married man. <sighs> we can still have our little, our little side thing we right. got going on. I was going to say that won't change, huh? All right, my friend. Thanks for all the information. Be happy, be healthy. Tune in next week. Deuces, everybody. Bye. Later.